I know it's taking a heal. We're all here, Rav. You're yeah. all there? Yes. All here. Everybody's here. Very good. Yesterday I gave a list. And you remember the list? Yes. What what was the list? Why are we arguing? Because of the disagreement or because or because for other for things? For other things. For Emmet. For other things, Rav. Most of the time we're fighting for other things, not the truth. Okay, so what is the list? No. What was the first one? No smiling. Atmosphere. Then, not a good atmosphere. Bad Negative atmosphere. atmosphere. What okay. was the second one? Disrespect. Disrespect of your spouse. Okay, that's what we're going to talk about now. We're going to deal with that. Uh, each one of us, I'm giving an advice that let's stop for one moment and to, to screen ourselves. Do I give enough appreciation to my spouse? How do I feel about my spouse? Do I see only the, the negative? Or I recognize that he has positive also? Whoever came to an outcome that he is not appreciating his spouse and is not looking at him in a positive way, it's very important to know that only because of this point, it, it can be a very big stumbling point in the, in the relationship. When the couple are not appreciating each other, how can you live like that? So what's the next step? I don't consider even what you're saying to me. I'm not appreciating even what you're saying to me. He has no value. And each one can ignore what the other one saying. Like you're talking to deaf ears. When a person sees that you canceling his ideas or his thoughts or his approach, what, what's going to be the outcome? What will be the outcome? I'll tell you what's going to be the outcome. It's going to be a fight. It's going to be a real fight. There is a big difference if I disagree with you. I disagree with what you're saying. Or I want to cancel it totally. Erase it. What's the difference between these two? Can you tell me? When you disagree, you have a difference of opinion. When you're erasing it, you're not even considering the person that's talking to you. Very good. Very good. Now, you're not only canceling his ideas, you're canceling his personality. Your personality is worthless. So then, 
the whole relationship is on a very, very shaky. Very shaky. So every small argument will turn to be a fight. You want to cancel me? Okay. I'll fight back. So it may very well be that you're gonna sit over here now in the class and the thoughts go through your mind. How and in what I'll be able to appreciate my spouse and his personality. You, you're searching, how can I, how can I look at his personality in a positive way? If, if this is the thoughts that I, that I have, so we have a relationship here, very complicated. And it doesn't let them the opportunity to see the positive side that everybody has. Every person has a positive side. Why do I feel that I cannot stand the personality of my spouse? Oh, I have an issue with this. I have a problem with that. Why is it? So we have two possibilities. One maybe is right. Maybe the one who thinks like that is right. And the other one has to do big time changes. But in the same token, maybe if you're going to look deeper into the matter, the one who is judging the other one also is not such a tzaddik. He also has to change a lot. The Torah says a person is looking at the other one through his eyeglasses. So if his eyeglasses is dark, I'll see you dark. If my eyeglasses is white, I'll see you the way you are. What kind of glasses we have on top? And the Torah says, Kola posel bemumo posel. Whoever is saying you, meaning he knows what it is, he knows, meaning he has this problem. As a side point, you know, the Torah has a command, if you see a witch, you should get, get rid of her, you should kill her, a witch, a witchcraft, you know, she, she's doing all kind of witch, yeah. How the Rachamim knew what is which? Meaning they have to learn what which is in order to, to be able to identify it. If I have an ego, right away I'll tell my spouse, you have an ego problem. Eh? How do you know? Because I have the same problem. So right away I put the blame on you. Not everything that we claiming that the other one 
is lacking it is correct. Many times I saw it right over here that the lacking that he is talking about, he has it or she has it, not the one that they accuse him to. Why? Because they got used already to be negative. So with his dark glasses, he sees everything dark. So I have to tell him, take your glasses off. Then you're gonna see your spouse in the clear eyes, in the true colors. I had a couple here that they had many, many arguments. Disagreement, okay. I was talking to the husband <clears throat> and the impression that I got was very good. So I told his wife, your husband is a very nice person, very charming. And he has, his mind is healthy mind he has, healthy. And you can lean on and you can trust every decision that you make is very responsible and he thinks very clear. Boy, she jumped on me. Boy, she jumped on me. If there is no the stable, she gonna, she got so upset, I said. Why are you so upset? So she told me, once I thought like you also. But I came to recognition that I was mistaken. I cannot count on him. I cannot count on his decisions because he's irresponsible. That's not what I saw the impressions. How can I appreciate him and what he's saying to me and his ideas that he all the time is upset? He has a temper problem. I didn't see any temper. I know when a person has a temper. It takes two seconds and I can see. When I got more deep into the, into the action, I found out that he was, he was, he, he got fired from his job for a long time. He cannot find a new job. And he doesn't have steady parnasa. And all day he is walking here and there doing nothing. And he feels very bad, feels bad. And he told me I have very difficulty time to get up in the morning. What should I get up for? His wife saw only the outcome. What caused it, she was not interested. He's laying in his bed, he's like this, he's like that, but why he's like this? Why? The fact that he wakes up late and for every small thing, he, because in the situation that he's in is not pleasant, 
right away from the positive side, she took the negative side <coughs> and she painted him all in black. Until she said his personality is not good and she lost the trust in him Now, if this couple having this agreement, they have a fight. Now, is the fight is because of the disagreement or it's because the way that I'm valuing my spouse. He's a lazy bum. He's not waking up in the morning. Every small thing, he jumps. So we're talking only symptoms. Where are the symptoms coming from? He has no job. His personality is very good. He has very good and clear mind. But right now in this period of time, he is in trouble. Why are you painting him in black? So when you started to disagree, everything is coming up. Why should I listen to you? You are a lazy bum. So it's not that this agreement is not a disagreement. It's what she or he thinking about each other. That's trigger the fight. That is very deep. Yeah. Until Lee, you understand this part? Yeah. Yes. We can have disagreement and smile to, to, to each other, meaning that the relationship are, is very good. Or we have disagreement and we're ready to choke each other. Not because we have different opinions, no. Because what's underneath it. How far off did he, did she know that he lost the job? Yeah, yeah, of course she knows. I'll tell you something. You know that all day long I hear only symptoms. All day long what I hear and people think it's the best news that they can give me. So I'll tell you how I'm looking at that. It's like somebody come and tell me, my car got stuck in the middle of the highway. Why, why, what, what happened? I didn't have gas. CNN, Fox, New York Times, a car got stuck on the highway because it didn't have gasoline. Did you hear that? What the news? And every couple that walk inside over here, again symptoms, again symptoms, and again symptoms, and I said, hello. What's the problem? Where the symptoms are coming from? Ask the dentists, I don't know if they are here, the Aquilos. Shalom, Rav, I'm here. 
Yeah, we hear. Here, here, Rabbi, we hear. Very good. A doctor? Yes. Let me ask you a question. Okay. If a person comes to your office with a jaw, a double jaw, yes. He said, Doctor, look, look, look. Are you looking at the jaw? We, we got to look for the source. What's the source? Probably faulty tooth. Tell him, open up your mouth and say, why are you looking inside? Don't you look outside? And say, I see outside. Hey, hello. Open your mouth, open your mouth. And then you say, oh. Then you have a mirror and you say, hello, you tooth, I have to drill. I think we have a root canal to do. There is a one nerve there, right? That have infection. And that's cause you jaw to be like that. Yep. Rebbe. Huh? Do you want to be my partner? Yes, of course. You, you I know he's gonna say well. that. <laughs> you know this pretty problem. well. <laughs> God bless you. Good I miss job. you guys. <laughs> We're always here. I know, I know. Always here. Very good. I'll do good. I'll be good as a dentist. <laughs> You'll be good as anybody. <laughs> Even a pilot. Pilot. Yeah, I think you can do a pilot too. <laughs> Because I'm, I will not deal with the symptoms. The, th the symptoms will just help me to understand that there is a deeper problem underneath. Yep. The biggest, the fight is, I know that I have to dig even more. So this agreement is something very good. I want you to know that that's, this is my, my mission to, to send you a message, a clear one. Don't be afraid of this agreement. It's very good this agreement. Because the truth will come out with the disagreement. I told you once. And I'll tell you again, Rabbi Yochanan was the sharpest person in Eretz Israel. He was the rab of Eretz Israel, Rabbi Yochanan. His chevruta was the head of the mafia that he brought back in Tshuva, Resh Lakish. His name was Shimon. His job was armed robber. A Jewish mafia in the broad daylight, they jump on you and they take all your belonging. And once they were, he was jumping on Rabbi Yochanan Pitomi, so because he thought it's a lady. And he said to Rav Yohanan, boy, you so handsome. It's Haval that you're not a lady. So, so Rav Yohanan was a sharp man. He told them, it's Haval that you have such a koach, you're not a Talmud Chacham. This koach, you have to spend it in Beta Midrash. What are you doing? He told them, let's make a deal. If you're coming to learn, I'll give you my sister as a wife. Could you imagine? Rabbi Yochanan will become a brother-in-law to the head of the mafia? 
what you out of your mind but he was a sharp guy he knew behind this guy there is a lot of koach and the slakish accepted the offer on the spot he was also very smart and they met they got he got married to the sister and he became Chavrut at the Rav Yochana. And Rav Yochana was a man that lost 10 children in his life. He had 10 boys, all died while he was still alive. He didn't lose his mind. He didn't lose his mind. Everybody else will lose his mind. When did he lost his mind? When the Shlakish died. He lost his mind so badly, he was already a Chilul Hashem. That Rachamim prayed that Hashem should take him. Why? Because after Reshlakish passed away, he said, who is going to challenge me? Who is going to disagree with me? Every Chavruta they, they brought him, he says, Rebbe, you're right. You're right. What he's saying is correct. He says, I don't need this. I don't need the yes man. I want somebody to jump on me and say what you're saying is not correct. So at least we have an argument, disagreement, and from the, the disagreement, the truth will come out. What you tell me, I'm right. I want a person to tell me that I'm not right. That's what I want. So, we live on disagreement. This is our life. In the yeshiva, that's what we're dealing all day long. Disagreements. That's give us the livelihood to search for the emet. When a couple fighting, they're looking for the truth. Are we looking for the truth? No. 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 We're looking at who is right, who is wrong. Who's going to be the boss and who is not the boss. And that's a terrible mistake. That's how we're losing kids. Instead of staying on the topic and say, what are we going to do? with the kid that is in trouble, who is right, who is wrong, your parents, his parents, what are we gonna do with the child is in trouble? Come up with something. No? And then we claim it, we love our kids. <laughs> First of all, we love ourselves. We have to admit. We have to admit. Because if I love my kid, I'll do everything to find what is the met, how to deal with a child in this kind of a situation. Let's go to number three. Number three is, what was number three? My notes take care. Willpower with no compromise. I'm always right. I always Very have to good. be victorious. Very good, Bacheva. Very good. Meaning, a person that wants to be always right, he likes 
to rule. Nobody can undermine me. This is a gene that he has. In any situation, they write. Did you see one's kids playing and one is about to lose? What are they doing? I don't want to play with you. You're cheating. <laughs> Why? Because you see, he's going to, to lose. He says, I cannot lose. So he'd rather get out of it. He said, you're a cheater. You're a liar. You, you're not playing fair. But I don't want to lose. And every disagreement you have, I'm the last one to call the shots. You have nothing to say. Now, does he care what you're saying? Or you're talking to a wall? In his mind, he says, let her talk, let her vent. Okay, okay, okay. You done? You, you done? That's what's going to happen. And so, come on. You're not even, you like air. That's what you are. There is no emitter, there is no clue. It's only me and that's it. Let me give you a scenario. A person, pay attention, pay attention now. A wife saying to the husband, you know, I want to go to my parents this Shabbat. Long time we were not there. The husband says, you know why we're not there for, for a long time? I don't have to tell you. His wife saying, what's, what's the reason? The husband saying, always when we come there, we're not alone. They're inviting more people and more people. So what do they need us for? It's not pleasant to sit on the table with people that I don't know. And his wife saying, and I don't feel I don't feel good because long time we were not there is my parents, you know, it's not nice. And you have to consider it. She talking to him, so she deciding to do something. She calling her, her parents and she said, please, we coming, please don't invite other people. The parent says, okay, the Shabbat is going to be only for you. Now she came back to the husband and he says, I did as per your request. I spoke to my parents and we're going to be only by ourselves. The husband heard this. What do you think he says? Anyway, I don't want to go to your parents this Shabbat.
What are you going to do to such a person? Nothing. Huh? Nothing. <laughs> you can go left and you can go right. He found an excuse. He doesn't want to go. Right. He found an excuse. And when we took away the excuse, then he said, but I don't want to go. So why didn't you say it in the first place? Because when I say no, it's no. It's kind of, it's kind of mental sickness. I said, no, no matter what accommodation you're going to do, it will stay, no. So, he will stick to his guns. He feels that if I'm going to her parents, I'm the loser. And me, I cannot lose. Even though the reason that he doesn't want to go, we took it away now that the roads are clear. If I go, I'm a loser because I said no already. One husband told me once, I'm afraid to admit why. If I admit that I made a mistake, maybe I will lose my authority in the house. And a lady sat over here. She said, Abrahamov, nobody was able to move me. When I say something, they who? Nobody can win over me. She is sick. And easy. You cannot live like that. This house will never reach the emit. And they'll fight day and night, missing the whole point. Why? Because they have a bad character. So now, again, it's not the disagreement that's causing all this. The fight is coming because I don't want to lose. I said no in the beginning. Now I said, okay. Oh. Now we understand very well. The Gemara that said, Reshaim, Reshaim, even on the doorstep of Gehenam, they're not doing tshuva. Could you imagine this? You are on the doorstep of Gehenam. Last chance, Habibi. Why not? Because I said once, I don't want to be, I'm not going to be. How ah, your life is destroyed? They don't care.
So now is not the is not the disagreement. It's what's behind it. One of them is sick. That's a problem. What's number four? What's Pensive. number four? You don't Pensive value your life. Mm -hmm. you, you don't value yourself. Oh, self esteem. You don't value yourself. Did you see once a person that wants to belittle himself? It's low self, low self image, low self value, low self esteem, everything is there. These people, every word that is not in place, they'll get hurt. A true one or a false one? Because they feel so bad about themselves. If one word is not in place, they Where is it coming from? They are afraid that the people who come to talk to them and they disagree with them, they want to take control over them. That's how they feel. Even though Bichlal is not the reality. So the fear that maybe he wants to control me, they're building themselves a shield. How? Offense. Attacking. Attacking. That's why sometimes the the reaction doesn't make any sense. The reaction is so powerful for small things because they want to prove to themselves and to other people that I'm stable. And I have a strong personality, and they don't want to get, and they don't want to accept any different opinion than their wife, because if I'll accept your opinion, I'm a loser. Because if he feel bad about himself. Kodarab. Yeah. In Russian, we have a say: the best defense is to attack. The best defense is offense. So now these people, they don't know what a met means. They're busy with themselves. What people might say about me, if I'll give in, yes, I'm a loser, and this, but what about the truth? What about the truth? Rob, if they feel that they're a loser, then why would they fight so hard to prove to others that they're the winner? Because he wants to prove to himself that he worst something. How could he do that if he himself feels he's worth worthless? That's the reaction. Uh, that's it's a natural like a deep It's a natural thing. reaction. Uh often. Okay. I got it. Thank you, Rob. So you should show to this person that you don't want to control. He's not going, 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 going to help. The moment that you disagree with his opinion, all the, the red lights and said, he wants to control me. He wants to control me. I'm not going to let it happen. The Bihlali doesn't want to control. He, he says, which, because you have a shield already. 
Yeah, I'm a shield. Mm -hmm. Right. Did you see once a girl that went out? She developed a relationship with a boy, and then the engagement got blocked off for some reason. The next one that comes should be open. No. Why not? That burnt. She's going to put up a fence. A, a that's, big, that's it. That's it. Very cautious. And now it's not the problem of the boy. She has the problem. And other people will, will say to this boy, you don't know how to communicate. You have to learn this. But it is not a problem. She has a she, she has a wall. When a person put a wall, zero. Rev, is there a way to break down that wall to make the person feel more comfortable or safe? Or needs to come to counseling. So is it subconsciously or is it something the person is subconscious of? Are they, is, it a re, is it real to them? Is it a reality to them? Or they don't even know themselves? They, they don't know. Hmm. Most of the time, they don't know. Hmm. I was asking a guy, why are you not considering the opinion of your wife? I said, I heard her. She has a lot. She's saying many things that I think that she is right. What's the story with you? His answer was, she putting me under pressure and she is choking me, she controlling all. Okay? He said, as long as he's not going to respect me like she should, that's how I'm going to react. I'm going to go against her, Bedafka. Now, he's going against her, Bedafka. Where is the emet here? An emet. Done. So, I always say, can you give me examples, please? When a person says, eh, uh, eh, uh, Eh, be, 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 be. I know he got caught because when you have example when something is bothering you you're going to shoot it like Shema Israel Chik Chak is coming out if you have to search if you have to search for example meaning Something is wrong, there is illusions over here. I don't know. Give me one line that you felt that your wife wants to control you. He couldn't remember. How can you not re remember? So I ask him again. Maybe you think, maybe you tell me something that I can see where is the problem. Tell me. He told me, I cannot give you any examples. But it's clear to me that she is putting me under pressure. No. So she needs to be wise and let him but, feel that he's the boss. Like you said before that. But he is the problem. She is. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but uh, 
for solution. She, she's not putting him under pressure, no. He what thinks. can I tell her? Yes, but what's the solution in this okay. situation? <laughs> Boy. Therapy. <laughs> now, step by step, step by step, I came to conclusion that his wife has a lot of patience and she is not she is not degraded him at all Bihlalo. She is very nice to him. But because he feels bad about himself, he is the problem, not she. He is the problem. He has a problem. So every word that she's saying, it is taking it like she wants to what? To put him under pressure and she wants to control him. Is not correct. You have a problem. You have a very low self-esteem. You're not valuing yourself. And then I found out even outside of the house, it's very hard for him to socialize with people because he feels that everybody's trying to put him under pressure and to control it. So when they're having this agreement, what are they arguing about? about the disagreement or it's a cause to fight because he has low self-esteem. A cause to fight because of the low self-esteem. That's it. Now I want you to think, you, all the couples over here, Why are we fighting? Is it the meant to find the truth? Or it's something that we have to deal with the character of a person? Fifty-fifty, Rabbi. With the character, Rabbi. Rob, can I ask a question? Um, we're all married to who we're married, and Baruch Hashem, we're attending your classes to, to figure out what's best. So when we're now, you know, guiding our children and who to get married, and we want them to marry someone who has a good quality in their personality, how do you help them identify someone who doesn't have or has a, like a mild form of these nine problems, not something intense? That's why in a responsible community, there is a person they call him the rabbi with a beard, and he will talk to the guy or to the girl and will give him a list what to look for. Yeah. To tell you that we're going to be a hundred per percent, I will lie to you. No. Something we have to leave for them to work on. Nothing is wrong with that. We all have to work. I know that we're all looking for Mr. or Mrs. Perfect. There is nobody like that that I know. Not yet. If we're saying that you cannot go to sleep unless 
both of you are in peace, meaning sometimes there is no peace. Okay? So what we have to do? We have to roll our sleeves and go to work and make sure there is peace. Whoever have to have apologize will apologize and everything else. And then you, there's no perfect. So what you have to teach your child, I'll tell you what. To always look for the truth. Which today, anyway, we're living in the world of Shekhar. Everything is false. Now go look for the Emet with this sea of the flood of Shekhar. Only through a dialogue. This again. Thank you, Ras. I'll give you an example why this agreement is good. We have both parents that they agreed in order to discipline a child, we have to whack him. We have to whack him. She says, yes, my parents walked me also. And, and he coming also from this kind of a house. And both of them agree. That's a met. Is that a met? If one will say no, very good. Now we have two opinions. One says we have to whack him, and the other one says, Chas shalom asu. Why yes, why no, we, we, we discuss it. Let's ask. At least you will know the truth. We'll tell you, don't do it. There is other ways. But if both of them are not asking, they again to each other, he says we have to work him. He said, she says, Amen. Amen. And then the child <laughs> grows up mentally sick. Rev, does Rev mean that when they both dis one agrees and one disagrees, they would go to a third party? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, not just that they're figuring it out on their own. And no, 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 no. Okay, just to clarify. Always. Thank you. If, I'm, if I want to see what is the good for my child, I'll go to the people who are experts. And it's not that I, we're going to take this side, that side will tell you what is there met in this case, and that's what you have to do. Most of the argument that we had, we still with the same argument over and over again, nothing came out of it, only we get farer and farer from each other, we calling name to each other, who knows what's going on there, right? Yes. The most beautiful thing that can be disagreement can be something devastating. I don't know. Ask who is it?
So now, שלח מנות, כל רגע. רבי, they don't want to wait online for you. אולה, קוראים מיוט. אוקיי. We're going to continue with the topic. Most probably, I don't know if tomorrow night we're going to have a show tomorrow night. I doubt it. Because it's Purim, right? Yes, Rav. Maybe I'm at the Shabbat. We're going to take off. And we come back with the nine o'clock. Mosei Shabbat. Tomorrow, it's a fasting day. So the shiurim will be as usual. Tomorrow at one o'clock, I'll give you a shiur about Purim. What Purim is all about. On the Megillah, the secrets of them, okay? What went on there? What between the the lines and Shabbat afternoon I'll give the class in the shul as usual at 5.30 okay and then I'll see you all again Shabbat Rabbi, if a person is in the flight and can't go to shul during the Megillah, well, he, can he should read before the flight at least. Before the flight, okay. Yeah. Maybe this person can read for himself. Let's say a person that has a COVID. And he now he got tested today after 10 days and he waiting for the result. So basically the result is gonna be on Friday, I guess. What he should do for tomorrow? Can he read to himself or like my son can read it for him? Somebody should read it for him me me Shera. Can me a clap. Yes, no clap kasher. Okay, good. That's okay. That's okay. But whoever is sick with, with COVID, yeah, and people are afraid to come into the house because they don't want to catch it. So if they know how to read by themselves, okay, good. If not, they exempt. Oh, I see. Now, if my son had the COVID, let's say around the uh, Chagim, Rosh Hashanah and uh, Sukkot, is he allowed to be around him with mask or not uh, recommended? He would uh, check himself if he has antibodies. Yeah, he does, but it was like uh, five months ago. Now, now if he has antibodies now. Oh, he's not going to get the result by tomorrow. But yeah. You can get a good mask. No, no, Rabbi, Rabbi, Bennett, mask. Rabbi Bennett on Main Street, he does the rapid test. He gives you the answer in 20 minutes. Okay, I'm going to tell you the rapid test showed the negative. Go to Rabbi Bennett on Main Street. So I'm telling you the, 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 the rapid showed negative, the PCR showed positive. So I don't trust the... No, no, he does PCR. I went to Dr. Bennett, the young one, Mm -hmm. He has the machine to do PCR in half an hour. And it's uh, accurate, uh, Rabbi? It costs you 200 bucks. It's okay. And it's accurate because that's how I found out. I went to the one, he told me, you're fine. 
Wow. So I said, let me go to him. And next day I went there and wow. he told me, you're positive. Wow. Yeah. That's what happened with my husband. He got the, the rapid, they said, you good. So he continued with his basic day, you know, like uh, go, he went here, went there. And then the PCR came positive after two days, health department called us. But you're doing good, Baruch Hashem. He tested today, we're waiting for the results. Let him, let him take the, the treatment of antibody. Yeah, it's in uh, two weeks. It's in no, two no, weeks. There is a... Oh, there, yeah, I see, I see. How, how should I make an appointment for that? Okay, yeah. My daughter have the uh, telephone there. It said uh, that, that Hasidim. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I got it in the hospital, but the Hasidim they know how to do things much faster. Uh -huh. They give you a what? They, they give you the give you plasma. They give you antibody. What? what yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Even though, even though that. Uh, he had already the corona? When you, when you tested positive... Yes, yeah, but he feels good. I felt also good. Ah, okay. I felt good. I see. But I said, I'm not taking any chances. I see. Can I get the phone number? I mean... Yeah, yeah, I'll get you the phone number. Okay. All right, Rabbi. Okay. Thank Come you. On, can you post the number, everyone, on the chat? Yeah, okay. Thank you so much. Grab by 7 o'clock tomorrow class. Tomorrow? At 1 o'clock. 7 o'clock class tomorrow? 7 o'clock. My what? Tomorrow okay. class tomorrow morning? Awesome. Yes. Business as usual, even on yeah. the on, on Purim day. Yeah. Even on Friday. Yeah. We live at seven o'clock. Right. Yes. Good. Looking forward to it. Good. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yes. This week we can have it. Can I miss? Thank you very much, Rabbi. Rabbi. Thank yeah. you very much. Rabbi, Rabbi question. Yeah. If uh, in, in synagogue, if somebody going to put uh, make Zoom, is my husband can hear through Zoom or he has to hear live? Live. Live. I see. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night, Rabbi. Good night, bye. Good night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good night.